Hi, I'm Wendell G. Welcome back to the Moscow Mules. Today is February 8th, 2047, and uh, I'd like to thank Oshitsky for the inspiration to do this. Um, also, I mean, while he's doing the tour de WBL, I just wanted to zoom in and do a quick look at some of the player development changes in uh, the Moscow Mules system. And in particular, um, the upticks in our farm system. So, just uh, I'm just going to be using the OSA um, ratings. Um, since I improved my scout um, funding, my uh, scouting on these players is a little bit different. But... Uh, anyway, uh, just uh, just a few quick thoughts here. I'm just going to start at the uh, WBL league and move the way, move my way down. Um, I'll start with um, Leonardo Munoz, and um, you can see that he is um, he is one pitch and perhaps an uptick of stamina away from being an outstanding starting pitcher, but. Turtle came over from Key West a, a couple, three years ago uh, in a great trade with them. And, um, yeah, you know, he's, uh, I've liked this guy since I laid eyes on him, and uh, he has really done the job for us over the years. He's had a few up and down, up and downs. Uh, one, one down year, I guess, uh, in uh, 2045. But anyway, um, as Turtle, Jaime is still great, pay is still great, uh, Luis Chavez great, Luis Ibarria came over from, um, he's a left-handed uh, reliever who came over from um, Key West in uh, a different trade, uh, it was a different, I think it was the Jose Rivas trade, and uh, he continues to improve, he's 25, but he looks like he's still got some room for improvement, uh, bullpen guy, if his changeup were to have a an uptick and get it up to about a 40 rating, he would be a starter for us, uh, presuming he grows into these other uh, OSA ratings. So he's a lefty, and uh, anyway, I like the, both of those guys, Munoz and Embaria, and uh, glad to see them uh, having success. Gallegos, you guys know about. Uh, Bill Mahoney, you know about. Let's see. Gonzalez Adipo. Donatello, Donatello slowly growing into his uh, his skills. Uh, okay, so that's the major league team. Let's go down to Triple A, and we've got one guy. This is really the guy who really prompted me to um, to um, do the video. That's this guy right here, Virgil Langenkamp, or probably he's from. Bad Vinsheim, Bavaria. He's, he's German. Hermann. Um, he um, was a minor league free agent. And uh, I'll go look at his history here in a second. But his ratings, man, boom. Look at his changeup. Just out of nowhere. Well, not just out of nowhere. He, he was a guy that I had great hopes on when I first picked him up. When I first saw him uh, back uh, February. It's three years ago now. 2044, uh, and I think I paid the guy a bonus just to get him locked down. I had great hopes for him, and then uh, something happened. I think he got injured, and his ratings kind of went shot a little bit. Uh, and um, but we stayed with him. He's a left-hander uh, with throws with a good 91, 92, 93 mile an hour velocity. Um, his stamina is pretty well shot, but he should be good for. Um, he should be good for a major league relief role uh, this year. So I think um, Osiki had a question about our uh, relief core. Well, I haven't really been active going out to find relievers particularly because uh, I've got this guy and a few others. Um, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of guys in the farm system to add up and uh, uh, provide a little bit of depth coming up. but. He's 27, and I've kind of been holding him down for a while, and he's ready to come up and be a major leaguer. So, let's look at his history right quick. Um, yeah, he came into the um, OSA. 
uh, October 30th of 2043, and I think the first time we had any visibility was in February and uh, so yeah, he signed a minor league contract with us. I was very happy. I felt like I pulled a coup, a bit of a, a minor coup to, to um, find this guy and bring him up into our system before anybody else saw him. Uh, but you can see that he his OSA ratings weren't that great um, at the time that I signed him. I projected 55 stuff, 50 control and uh, 50 movement and 45 control um, and yet, um, Howard, our, uh, Howard Ross, our chief scout, thought he had a little bit more than that, maybe a little bit more control, or maybe I just hoped his control would come around, so, um, yeah. Looks like his only injury has been a sore elbow, two-week elbow for, in 2045, and other than that, he's been, uh, he's been fine. So yeah, you can see uh, his control just keeps, uh, the ceiling just keeps popping up according to Howard. It went up to 60 and then 65 and now he's grown into a 60 out of 65 control. His movement uh, ceiling has stayed flat but he has grown into that movement of 50 and his stuff has popped up a couple of times. And I don't know that there is a uh, way to track stuff, the um, specific pitch improvements. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, just, um, just, just, uh, happy to finally bring this guy into our system. Virgil Longenkamp. Maybe the reason, maybe he was already fragile before I got him. Um, hmm. All right, well, let's go back and look at, um, the AAA roster. Langenkamp is really the major deal in uh, AAA. Fate's a sure, sure thing coming over from Amsterdam last year. Uh, I need to find a place in my roster for this guy, but I am um, loaded at the DH first base position. I normally play Jaime Robles there, um, but um, sure, sure thing needs needs uh, he needs some playing time. He's actually a decent left fielder, according to according to all this. Um, not a terrible left fielder, at least. So maybe I don't know, man. Maybe be our fifth outfielder. <clears throat> maybe he could start, and we could put him in put in a defensive replacement in the late innings. He did well in uh, Katake last season. Um, I really wanted to bring him up in the fall in the uh, September call-ups and the internet problems and I was just totally frustrated with all that so I didn't do it. I uh, didn't have a chance to but you can see he hit uh, 329 with a 408 OBP for us and a 1.031 OPS 153 OPS plus and a 3.5 ward just at Katake. So um, yeah this guy needs a spot on the major league roster for sure for sure for sure you, you get it? <laughs> For sure. Okay, I'll shut up. Um, so, other guys on our AAA team are basically just um, just kind of uh, sitting there. Uh, Osiki talked about uh, Brendan Piercy, and he'd be okay. He's a, he's a righty. Um, age 24, he'd be all right. But um, that changeup has still got some improvement left. He's a fly ball kind of a pitcher, and he'd be okay in a pen, but for now, I'm, I'm kind of holding off on him. He's, by the way, he is a long-term um, Moscow guy uh, since 2040 when he, we picked him up and he signed a minor league contract with us. Um, I don't think this was a international free agent, but could have been. Could have been. Uh, you can see when we first picked him up, he was kind of um, meh. Uh, he projected ceilings at, uh, he, we projected his ceilings at 45, 45, 35. And then um, in uh, 43, he busted up to 50, 50, 45. And then suddenly in 2044, in the off season, uh, his ceilings busted up to 60, 50, 50. And uh, the roids got him ejected for 14 games because he caused a brawl, uh, started getting in some little bit of trouble and whatnot, but um, OSA finally, uh, he's finally grown up into his 
control of uh, 50 out of 50 ceiling. So yeah, he's been with us for quite a while and always happy to see a guy um, hit his ceilings you know, such that he is uh, probably WB already. Anybody else want to talk about? Um, Mahmoud Jamal used to be one of my favorite relievers. Uh, despite his sort of abysmal ratings, he um, he really did well for us. Um, and this is just a snapshot of his, let's look at his pitching stats over the years. Um, well, I guess he only pitched for us in 2043 and 2044 on the Major League team. But he's been with us for a long time since we uh, got him out of, um, drafted him out of college. And uh, 2044 was his finest year, but uh, 28 innings pitched, 1.25 whip, 2.57 ERA, and uh, 177 ERA plus. He's always sort of belied his his ratings have never been great, um, but um, he just you know he just gets it done, and uh, he's he he gets it done really well. Had some problems in Cat Cat last year, but I think it's because he's not happy. Um, to be in AAA, you know, he's he's 30. You know, who wouldn't want to be back on the major league team? So he's he's one of my sort of uh, quietly favorite all-time uh, relievers. Uh, haven't talked about him, but um, yeah. I actually, um, I think I let him go accidentally one year and then had to pick him back up. Let's look at his history right quick. Drafted in the 2035 draft. Failed to sign. We, we drafted him in round two in 2035, but he didn't sign with us. Drafted him in 2036 uh, in round two, and he did sign with us, so out of Oklahoma State. Uh, let's see. Oh, 2042 became uh, November, became a minor league free agent. I, I think I simply, either he didn't accept a minor league free agent extension or I let him go. And um, interesting. Yeah. So he's been making the major league minimum. He might be due for major service one year. No, he's not quite due for an upgrade yet for a salary bump. But he's probably one of these guys. Um, he probably is going to stay in AAA, barring emergency this year. Because even though, yeah, uh, even though he has a history of getting it done for us, the ratings do kind of play into my uh, perception of this guy. And anybody else I want to talk about? Wei Ming Shi, Vladimir Bakhmediev. Oh, Bakhmediev. Um, I got him on a trade with uh, Bueno. It's a one for one trade. I believe it was for a short. No, let's see. He was a shortstop for. Um, oh, man. Who was the trade for? I'll, I'll pull up his history here in a second and look at it. Um, you know, I, I really. As Osiki talked about, our Achilles heel has been um, has been straight up the center of the defense, shortstop, second base, shortstop, and center field. Center field was a big shocker for me. Um, oh, I gotta check on the dog right quick. All right, well, okay, I'm back. Oh, that old puppy, that old old puppy. She's kind of old, but she's still my puppy. She's kind of big, 80 pounds or 85 pounds. The vet calls her heavy, but she's still my puppy, little Jimmy Sue. Big Jimmy Sue. Speaking of a boy named Sue, shortstop, Vladimir, Vladimir Bakhmadiev, a Belarusian. Uh, this guy, you know, his ratings say he should be able to get it done, but last year I gave him... Um, you know, we gave him a dozen games, and he kind of didn't get it done for us. Um, hitting 159 at the plate and only getting on base 178. So, probably a bit of a bust, but I haven't quite given up on him. Um, I'm going to give him probably another try. If not in the spring, then later in the year. I'm, he'll probably get a try in the spring. So, Bakhmediev, Torvald Hickman. Now that guy, did I, did I sign him 416-2045? I don't even remember why I signed him. I gotta assume that he's been, he's been smoking a little bit too much weed. 
because he kind of doesn't care about stuff. But um, did I sign him for his popularity? No, nope, apparently not. Anyway, Torvald, probably a short timer in um, <laughs> in Kateke. So that's uh, AAA. Uh, Noel Abbott, old Noel, still down here, along with Nyasori Adombe. Uh, old Noel, um, he'll come back up. I don't know why he's just a 1.5 rating, but uh, he'll come back up, man. He, he's um, he's been a yeoman for us for many, many years. He's one of the fan favorites, uh, so old Noel will be back up. And uh, Nyasori Adombe, you see that OSA still thinks this guy is amazing but maybe not quite as amazing as it used to be. He's uh, 30 now, and he's one of these uh, oddball characters whose ratings have always been like sky high, just blue sky. And he never grows into the ratings, but they never fall either. Well, I think his contact rating has fallen a bit this year. Um, somewhere I've got an image of his... Um, I'll see if I can... Maybe I've got an image of it. Hold on just a minute. Well, I couldn't find it. I thought for sure I'd saved a screenshot of uh, Nyasoria Dumbay's um, amazing ratings. So instead, here's a bonus dog picture. And back to Nyasoria. I like dog. So, um, yeah, he's never really come into fruition. Uh, last year, uh, Adumbe hit 234 with a 276 OBP. His defense was fantastic. He uh, almost was good enough to overcome his uh, his uh, hitting at the plate, his lack of hitting, but not really. At least it was an improvement over 2045 when he he went 181 to 209. So 181 to 234, that's a 53 point improvement. If he were to hit another 53 point improvement, hit uh, 287 or something like that, oh baby, yeah, 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 yeah indeed. Uh, unlikely, but I'll keep my eye on him throughout the season. That, that hidden home run power, too, man. Woo. Okay. Well, anyway, that's Nyasori. And uh, that's Katake. Let's move down to uh, Novaya Maka, my double-A affiliate. And uh, here, the top of the list, uh, there are some guys here. Uh, my scout has bones to pick with some of these ratings he thinks that uh, so so we'll we'll kind of cherry pick some of these guys this is where double a is where i really get happy uh this is where i my talent sort of uh, accumulates until until it's just about wb already the first is obi nun kenobi here obi niana esperanzilla uh his ratings his osa ratings just soared immeasurably much like a uh, niasauri's and then kind of took a hit uh this year and uh, my scout's a little bit more moderate thinks he's a little bit better than this but his ceilings are not quite as high so anyway uh obi is uh i'm hoping he's 24 he's he's pretty much time for his uh time to shine in the big leagues i'd really like for him to cook a little bit longer down in double a uh, may bring him up to tri triple a this year not really sure you can see he's still a one-star player according to OSA hit 284 slash 417 last year in um, Novaya Maka hit 19 home runs as well so the kids got some power that's Obi-9 next guy Ronaldo Trabula this guy man durable closer uh, right-handed reliever uh, he's got three pitches the third pitch is not very good, but he's got that 70, that 70 stamina. You know, when Osiki was talking about um, OU's relief core and how they all need to have a lot of stamina, this guy kept coming to mind. Um, he still hasn't hit his projections, so he's probably going to stay in AA another year. He's 21. Uh, he may be ready to come up pretty quick next year, but uh, he's, been, he's been really fun. He was an international free agent signing. Uh, let's go take a look at his history. I, I gave him for me. This was the unheard of a <laughs> bonus of 472,000 back in 2043. He was one of the first, if not maybe the first international free agent I signed. He might have been the first guy I ever signed as my uh, as a general manager. So uh, yeah, he he he's always looked you know 50 50 60. 
he's always looked like he's got potential, and he's uh, he really has improved his pitches in the past two years. And um, yeah, so happy with that guy. Uh, let me let me take you back through uh, Obi Nunn's history, by the way. Uh, he was actually drafted round six draft by Istanbul and released, and he didn't. I mean, when I looked at him in free agency, minor league free agency, I didn't exactly see a diamond in the rough. He was projected to be a 40 contact type hitter, um, but his eye, that 60 projected 60 eye, really got my eye, and so um, yeah, so he. He soared up, and I did a little post about him, named the number eight prospect in the WBL uh, in 2046, about this time last year. Yeah, so that's uh, OB Ronaldo. Ronald Riggs, this is another guy who just kind of came in out of the blue. Um, OSA is not quite as high on this guy as my scout is, but uh, He's he's got some still some potential at age 21. Good defense, good glove, uh, fantastic third baseman. I think it'll be a fine shortstop, and or second base. Um, does not make too many mistakes with the ball. Uh, gets to the play uh, pretty well. Um, he's got great a projected great eye and good home run power. Uh, his contact's going to have to come up before he can be WB already, and Howard thinks it might. Um, However, uh, when he he transitioned from single A to double A last year, and he hit um, 268, 372 in single A with uh, six home runs, five triples, and 13 doubles, a 766 OPS, and a fine 1.9 WAR. I moved him up to Novaya Maca last year, even though he's only 21. I thought, well, I can't keep keep a man down, so. I brought him up. He played 27 games in Double A, and he only hit 204 slash 295. So, not sure if I brought him up a year too soon, or if he. I, my suspicion is he just needs a year to full year in Double A. See what he's got. Fucking Neef. This guy was uh, one of my first uh, draft picks, <clears throat> maybe the very first draft pick, and I've always liked him. Uh, he projects to be a Decent to Midland uh, hitting catcher, decent good fielding catcher. So uh, back in my, my catching day woes when I first started playing, this guy was, uh, he caught my eye. He's 22, and um, he was a second-round pick, and a uh, solid second-round pick, I think. And uh, hit 251, 379 last year, his second year in double-A. Pretty flat over his year-to-year -year performance in 2045, and um, kind of wondering if I need to bring him up to AAA this year, see if he can bust through those ceilings a little bit. Spencer, this guy, <clears throat> I acquired him in free agency. Oh, by the way, I'm kind of curious, how much did I, how much of a bonus? Wow, 4.6 million dollar signing bonus. Whew, I was determined to get this guy though, uh, back in 2043. I wanted him. And I had the budget for him, you know. So Spencer was released by um, Buenos, but I think he is a little bit better. He's he's kind of matured a little bit. He's got great stamina. One of those relievers with really great stamina. He's 24 though, and you know he doesn't have. I'll give him time to continue growing. He might have to move on up to AAA this year. He's a Tanaka. Let's see who else do I want to talk about here. Uh, he's got the potential to be a perfectly average bullpen arm. Uh, Vitali Vishagan. Dave Chase, this is the guy. Uh, OSA projects him as fairly mm, abysmal to middling type of a uh, hitter, but uh, he's been hitting better than an abysmal type of a hitter, and uh, Howard thinks he's quite a bit better. He was released by Dublin 2043. He did a full year for us in single A and hit 270 slash 375. That's when he caught our eye with a 775 OPS, 400 slugging, uh, and uh, brought him on up to double A in 2045 where he hit 259 slash 368 with a 1.2 war in double A. That's a pretty good first year in double A. Now, last year, he didn't do so well. Uh, he only started 93 games. He had some competition 
at uh, at second base, um, and hit 251 slash 366. So, not quite as good, not quite as many reps at the plate, and not really sure. He was sort of my second baseman of the future for a while there. So, I'm not really sure where I'm gonna go with him. Fernando Chavez, OSA really crapped on his ratings this year. Um, but I like this guy a ton. I think he's much, much better than this contact rating, at least. Um, so um, I picked him up from Buffalo in the Donald as a part of as one minor piece in the Donald Mason trade. And I just have liked him, you know, ever since I saw him. He's a, he's a middle of the road uh, defender in left and right, particularly left field. But uh, since he's been with us in 2045, Double A, he hit 315 slash 376 with a 514 slugging. And in 2046 last year, he improved that by hitting 332 slash 397 with a 588 slugging and a 6.0 war. He was one of the top war players in our minor leagues. So I think we can throw out the contact rating. I think he's much better than that. And he's got speed for days. So that's Fernando Ch uh, Chavez. Back, back, back. Anybody else I want to talk about? Not really. I hear the dog knocking. Oh, Dave Abbott. Um, he uh, he was a an acquisition. He was a minor league free agent that somebody else gave up on. And oh God, man, that looks just nasty. The mouth hair, man. Um, anyway. Um, he uh, he hit well enough for us. He hit great in single A, two years in single A, and then uh, a year in double A where he hit 251, 339. He's 22 and he still got some time to uh, to bust through those ceilings. But uh, I really had him uh, had my eye on him as a uh, good DH. All right, pup, hop up, go ahead. You got water. You've been fed. You've been outside, and now you're sitting there looking at me. No, I'm not going to feed you anything else. No. You had two hot dogs and kibble. If you don't want that, it's tough. Huff up. Or go lay down. It's all, it's all good, Jimmy. It's all good. That Jimmy dog. Sometimes we just don't see eye to eye, man. Anyway, out of double A, the guys that I'm looking for to make an impact soon are Obiniana, Esprenzilla. Uh, and no, he is not. Uh, I, he... I'm tired of people asking for him. He's not trade bait. I'm not going to trade him. As desperate as I've been for middle infielders, um, my middle infielders are really not up for grabs. Um, Ronald Riggs and Dave Chase are the guys in the middle infield that, um, frankly, the guys down here that uh, are uh, could make an impact, along with our middle reliever slash closer, Ronaldo Tribula. Ron Haney is another guy. He was an early draft pick, but looks like his ceilings have collapsed on him a bit. And there's Haywood Yusim, a recent trade product. Down to Belgorod. We've only got basically one guy in Belgorod to uh, brag on, maybe a couple. Oh, wow, look at Paul Madison. He's jumped up. Uh, the guy that I'm looking to make an impact in Belgorod, uh, out of Belgorod, is um, Leonardo Rodriguez. I'll talk about a couple of other guys here. Let's start with Paul Madison, though. He was a uh, draft pick. I'm, I'm terrible at drafting. I talk about it a lot, but he uh, he's a left-hand, left-handed three-pitch guy who is probably a bullpen guy unless he can get his change up um, up there. He was a round one, a late round one pick in 2045. He's got maximum stamina, stamina for weeks. Uh, stamina rated 80 according to OSA and uh, everything else looks like a. It looks very much like Carlito Bernardino, so um, a spot starter and bullpen guy, and um, so he had a pretty good year in uh, Single A last year, and I need to move him on up to Double A. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. I need to make some moves and export this file. He, uh, let's see, his first year in Belgorod in Single A. He, uh, let's see, he threw to an ERA plus of 77 with a 1.42 whip. This year, uh, this past year, 1.15 whip and an ERA plus of 130 with a 4.4 war. 
So he was really good for our um, for Belgorod. You know, with that 40 control, I'm not sure I should push him up already. His stats say push him up, but 45, 50, 40. I'm going to wait for his control to uptick just a little bit. I'll think about it. I'll have to think about that. Here's the guy, Leonardo Rodriguez. Um, if he reaches his OSA ceilings uh, in batting, you know, 50, 50s across the board, 50 contact, 50 gap, 50 discipline, and 50 avoid K with a 30 home run power. So just a tic-tac kind of a middle infielder. You can play a shortstop. He basically can play all over the middle infield, left side, short, second, and third. Um, and of course, the shortstop position is what I need. Last year, he did okay in Belgorod, but not great. He slashed 234 slash 326. Um, uh, hit 10 home runs, which is a little bit much for a 20 rated home run power, even in single A. So, um, I, you know, I think he's um, not sure what to make of him yet. I would say, based on these numbers, his contact is not going to be good, but his eye will be fine and his uh, power will be higher than um, than is projected. So here's a, just a guy to keep my eye on. Uh, don't really expect too much. Uh, he just kind of blew through his ratings when I signed him back in 2044 for $70,000 bonus. Um, yeah, so. Well, it actually looks like his, uh, his ceiling has fallen a little bit. He was 55, 30, 50 back then now he's 50 30 50 so I don't know but anyway he's he's one of the guys I'm looking to uh, hopefully make some impact on our big league team someday Paul Bell um, center fielder was released by another squad and we picked him up and uh, he did well for us last year 249 slash 307 with uh, six home runs um, Definitely double A material. Don't think I'll be promoting him this year. He's 21, but possibility. Gilberto Diaz. This guy was an international free agent signing. We paid $390,000 for this guy uh, back in 2043. And uh, he still projects to be a Midland reliever. So uh, he did really well last year at Belgorod, uh, pitching to a 1.11 whip. With a 2.49 ERA, one of our outstanding pitchers, a 5.8 uh, WAR rating. Bento Embarador. This guy was so excited about him, but he got an injury or two, and it kind of dinked his control rating and his stamina. So he could still, if he stays injury free, he could still um, be good. He's ready for Double A right now. I got a bunch of guys I need to move up from Single A. I need to start moving people up. Uh, let's see, Jack Gallon. He was a uh, guy who just appeared out of nowhere out of in our minor leagues and because um, I was really wanting uh, catchers at 50 contact and 60 I uh, along with uh, 55 catcher rating yeah so I'm hoping he can come up and be a backup at some point Jesus Perez we have Jesus on the team uh, we picked him up in the draft a couple of years ago 2045 round two pick um, I actually at the time projected him to be a dark horse of a starter, uh, but his curveball never came in. And when he was practicing his curveball, he uh, partially tore his UCL, so he's out for Tommy John surgery right now. So, uh, you know, Jesus may not be walking on water this year. Here's the guy I want to talk about, Epco Westerdoing. He showed up out of nowhere. What is he doing down in single A? Yes. Immediately move this guy to double A. Probably need to get him a triple A. He's 22. Um, this guy could be a utility center fielder. If not for us, then uh, you know, a late defensive replacement who won't hurt you too much at the plate. Rated 50s across the board. Uh, and he saved the whole year in Belgorod. He was released by Baton Rouge uh, last year and stayed the whole year in, um, stayed the rest of the year for us in Belgorod and slashed 293, 400 with um, five home runs and a 9 -1 -1 OPS for a 1.1 total war with us. So this guy has some hidden value and um, I was um, 
uh, PMing with uh, uh, Gugsta about it, <laughs> and Gugsta was like, "Fuck! I can't believe I missed this guy." But yeah, he's a um, classic Gugsta type uh, Cardinals type player. Great speed and stealing and base running instincts, uh, and won't hurt you too much at the plate. Yeah, so this I'm really happy to have found this guy, add him to the team. This guy, uh, Jose Bautista. I didn't want to talk about him, but um, I, I kind of thought he was a steal out of uh, minor league free agency. Somebody else let him go, and his ratings don't look great here. But I think he's got, I think he's got a lot to show. And um, I signed him too late in November of last year to to get a chance to, um, you know, uh, get him some reps in the field. So I'm really curious to see how he does in the field this year. He may have. He may even start in double A. Nah, probably not. All right, I think that's all I wanted to really show out of Bill Gorod. And then let's go to our international free agency. Alton Glass, Harley Jacks. Harley, I got a couple of Harleys on my team, and i am got high hopes for both of them. Leonard Tertlio, Leonardo, got high hopes for him. Here's my annual look at Marshall Arbita. My first first round pick. Oh God, what a terrible mistake! I predicted this guy as the second best shortstop in the 2043 draft. You, you see, this is how desperate I've been for a shortstop ever since I traded uh, Juan Padilla. <laughs> so the curse of Juan Padilla, the curse of Juan Padilla. Um, yeah, he didn't even get he 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 made five plate appearances last year. The, the sad fact is, I can't bear to cut the guy. I just can't bear to cut him. He's just going to stay in my system forever. He's never going to be let go. Ever. Ever. Never ever. So, uh, let's go over to front office, and then we're going to go check out the International Complex. So, watch out for that overhanging cliff to your left, and uh, right this way. And here we are. Uh, in this room, you see our International Complex players working out, drinking beer, hitting on the ladies, and uh, sending out terrible tweets that make the whole organization look really bad. Um, but enough about the uh, Washington Nationals. Let's talk about the Moscow Mules. Our top player, top rated player here um, in the complex, by OSA at least, is Luke Gwilt. Now, he is not my top guy. I have to look or who that is. But um, Gwilt was an international free agent pickup, and um, we paid $1.18 million for him last year. I think we stole him from Wolfman or somebody. Always say he loves this guy, man. Loves him. And as bad as I need a shortstop, man, if he was even close to this, I'd bring him up right now and put him in Moscow at age 18. But he's got some, uh, he's got some growth ahead of him. And uh, we'll see. These are these are starry-eyed numbers. This is like starry, starry night. But uh, we'll see. I don't believe those numbers for what it's worth, which is nothing. Uh, but he did uh, improve his ceilings in contact and eye since he's been in our organization, and he's improved his current abilities according to his ceilings. And nothing has fallen off. So, if his ceilings are improving and nothing is falling, and he's coming up into his ceilings, probably a good sign. Here's another catcher. I was so my two paranoias. My first paranoia when I came into the league was catcher, and so I've always been overcompensating for catchers. And then my second one after I traded uh, JP was going after middle infielders. And anyway. Um, Enough about that. Yohao Guya. Yo Joe. Joe. Um, again, here's another case where his ratings look fine. His ceilings look fine. Uh, his defense is, is adequate. And uh, he may be a, um, a, a, dipo, a, a Zippo, a Zippo, a kind of a backup catcher at some point. He's a right-hander. Uh, let me take a put a break here and I will um, or pause it right quick. I want to find the guy that I've got my eye on. 
Okay, this is the guy. He's a center fielder, Damian Carmody. OSA doesn't not too high on him, uh, but I I've got my eye on him. I think he's going to be a fine center fielder um, in the uh, bigs someday. I think he's got plenty of um, growth ahead of him. Waterman is another one of those center fielders, and uh, I think uh, Toad Toad was a just a regular minor league minor league or, or free uh, what do you call it international signing by our team a few years ago 2043 toad and um, yeah so i think toad will be fine too center fielder how is he left center and right better and left hmm what if he's not getting enough reps in center field uh, but those are the two guys that i've really got my eye on uh there's one more guy here Echevarria. He's also a center fielder. And I think he's going to be better than his ratings currently show. Manuel Echevarria. Uh, he came in as an international free agent. We signed him for 162000 And his ceiling, his contact ceiling has grown. But everything else is pretty much the same, same as it was in 2046. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Let's go back uh, to our front page here. I want to show you how uh, OSA rates our prospects, top prospects. Uh, Obiniana Esperanzia, shortstop, double A. Uh, I am looking to either move him up to triple A, possibly all the way up to the bigs by the September call-ups. Uh, don't want to push him too fast. <laughs> um, and uh, secondly, uh, first baseman, um, actually, I've got him at first, but he's a left fielder. Fate's a sure, sure thing. Uh, it would be a sure thing DH for a big league team, and I need to find a spot for him. Starting pitcher, hey, would you, hey, would you sim? Let's see. Yeah. You can see Howard doesn't think quite as much of this guy, of his ceiling, as OSA does. But if he holds into uh, OSA's 60-level control, then I think he'll be... Um, He'll be an adequate um, reliever slash. He's got six pitches. This is why I like the guy. Six pitch. He's a six pitch. Six pitch genius. He's right-handed thrower. Durable. Came over in a Buenos Aires trade, and um, I think this guy is gonna. He's gonna have an impact at some point on our big league club. You know, it's possible he could be a number five starting pitcher for us if we can get some bats in the lineup. And then the number four of our top prospects is the center fielder Epco Westerduin, whom we picked up out of minor league free agency when he was cut by Baton Rouge last year. So that's it. Um, as far as Moscow's projection, no big, uh, what was that all about? No big changes ahead, uh, no major plans for major movements or anything like that. Um, so just, just more step by step. Uh, hopefully progress this year and uh, see where we go. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again.